You know, Mark Hatfield, this one-time senator from Oregon, Christian guy, said, Christianity was born in, in Israel. They took it to Greece and they made it into a philosophy. They took it to Rome and they made it into an institution. They took Christianity to Europe and they made it into a culture. They brought it to America and they made it into a business enterprise. Oh. And there's more truth to that than there is fiction. And I'm glad that you're not making this into a Well, business. you know what bothers me is when it does become a money maker and you still keep your 501c3. Yeah, that bothers me too. Because I, I mean, I will, you will say, admit. I will admit that I did do one thing right. Yeah. Starting out, I was a 501c3 nonprofit, and my dad said, I hate to think of you sleeping on couches the rest of your life and living off love offerings. And I said, well, God's called me. And then money started coming in. And I said, Mother Teresa's nonprofit, this is a cash cow. Yeah, that's right. And so I started paying taxes like everybody else. So it has been a for-profit corporation for a long time. So that does relieve some of the guilt. Well, the thing is, the thing is, no That's, matter where you I'm go. justifying myself, sorry. You get to listen in on it. I'm still working through all this stuff. Good news, you're saved by grace. That's it. Grace, buddy. That's it, yeah. You know? Yeah, you, Not how much you give away uh, or what you do. You do it because, you got to do it because it pleases you. Yeah. You got it? You yeah. give it away because that's... And it problem. always does. Yeah, it does. It, it, it always does. feels good. Yeah. I, I contend that everything we do is for selfish reasons. I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. I'm falling in love with Jesus because he's very interesting. I'm not on this path because I want to show how spirit, it's because it's the most fascinating thing I've ever discovered. Let me tell you, he's going he's gonna to get to you. The more you love him, the more you're going to love those who are in need and yeah. you have to respond. So we're going to talk about the Greeks and how they have ruined Christianity. Yeah. Can't wait to hear this. Well, you know, uh, as the gospel... It sounds a little boring. Oh, no, it's, it's shaking. All right, the Greeks. All right, fill me in because okay, I let me don't... Give, let me give you this. All right. Christianity starts as a Jewish movement, right? Right, right. And the early Christians thought like Jews. Right. When they took Christianity to, to the Greek cities... They tried to marry Christianity with Greek philosophy. And that's what happened. Now, let me tell you. Your Cheerios are backing up on you. <laughs> now, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. All right. First of all, we got all screwed up with Greek philosophy when it came to what happens when we die. Okay. Okay. For instance, you go to a funeral and they say the body is here in the casket, mm -hmm. but the soul has gone to be with the Lord. Right. You've heard that. Oh, yeah. That's to Greek. be absent from the body is to be present that, with the Lord. Greek philosophy. Well, I don't know. You know why? I don't know. Because what the Bible teaches and Paul makes clear in Thessalonians is not the immortality of the soul. But the resurrection, resurrection of, the body. of the body. I know. Your body shall be resurrected. I don't know that I want this body for eternity. It's going to be a good one. He's going to take this and he's going to make it into a good body. Give me a facelift. He's going to, he's going to make, I'll tell you what he'll do. <laughs> do you want to look like this for eternity? I'll tell you what. He's not going to change my face. You know what he's going to do? He's going to make everybody think that my face is handsome. Everybody will look at me and say, Ooh, what a gorgeous face that is. They're not saying that now. Uh -uh. They're not looking at your chin. And everybody's going to look at you and say, gee, I wish I had a chin like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's, that's what's good. He's going to change the way in which we are we're perceived. We're perceived. That's it. Huh. So That'd be nice. The way we're going to be perceived. So the, the idea of beauty will change. That's right. But we will all be... A flabby gut will be wonderful. Jesus, the, Paul writes... Even as Jesus was physically resurrected from the grave, so shall you be. Now, it's, it's going to be a transformed body, for this corruptible body shall take on incorruption. incorruption. But the Greeks taught the immortality of the soul. The New Testament teaches the resurrection of the body. You're, you, know, you say, well, wait a minute. When I die, are the Seventh-day Adventists right? That when I'm in the ground, 
I'm going to be there You're sleeping. until the trumpet sounds and the Lord returns? Answer, yes and no. And, no. and once again, we're back to Einstein's concept of time. You bury me here and now. You come back five years later, if the Lord hasn't returned, my body's still there. Well, what about those people who've already turned to a tree? Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. All right. Let me finish. All right, finish. And if the Lord's return was to attend, occur 10 years from now, those two moments will be compressed into the same moment so that the moment of my death is simultaneous with his second coming, except for people who are here in this world. Because here in this world, we're caught up in time-space continuum. But at the speed of light, the moment of the second coming and the moment of my death are what? One. Which means the minute I die, I am present with the Lord, physically resurrected, even as Jesus was. What's even more is, Paul says, we are all what? Resurrected together with Christ. You say that's impossible. He was resurrected 2,000 years ago. But 2,000 years ago when he was resurrected, is simultaneous with that moment when I will be resurrected. Because with God, all things happen in his eternal now. That's heavy, I know. But, the but where's grandma? You know, I mean, sometimes, I mean, like, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present because it's immediate, because it's time, because you, okay. you, you leave, you go into that non, yeah, you the go eternal into now. Dimension, another dimension, another yeah. dimension of time. And Einstein talked about the fourth dimension. Now, let me go a step further. Okay. Um, it's because of that mind-body dichotomy that Christians too often have been concerned about people's souls without being concerned about their bodies. The justification for slavery, for instance, before slavery was abolished. If you had asked the slave owner, what are you doing for these people? Well, I gave them a preacher so that they could get their souls saved. Yeah, but they're getting whipped, they're getting beaten. Uh, but that's only happening to their body. We don't. Oh, uh, yeah. Point is, I'm concerned about people's souls. No, I am concerned about, here's the word, the whole person. Uh -huh. Any Christianity that just is rescuing people's souls without caring about what happens to their body is inadequate. Any Christianity that cares about people's physical needs and doesn't care about their souls is inadequate. Jesus came to deal with the whole person. I teach at Eastern, as you know, Eastern University up in St. David's, Pennsylvania. And man became a living soul. Yeah. Wait, wait, go, before you go back, go into that. Remember what it says, that God breathed into Adam and man became a living soul. So you do believe in the soul. The, but the soul, once again, that's a good, I'm glad you asked that. Well, I'm glad I did too. Because in the ancient Hebrew world, the soul was the total person, not just some little part of his, some, part of his being. It's the total so what was he before God breathed into him? He was nothing but dirt. Animal. He was dirt. Yeah. He created this thing and God breathed in him and suddenly he became. And that's why we at Eastern talk about we're going to bring the whole gospel to the whole world declaring that the whole person is to be rescued by Jesus. So Jesus is not only interested in getting our souls saved. He's interested in our bodies and our physical and social psychological needs he's interested in everything about us as persons uh, so any theology that separates the soul from the body acting like the only thing that's important is the soul is not in accord with the Jewish tradition you see the Greeks believe this they believe that before you were ever born your soul was in another world really a pre-existence and then something terrible happened you were born and, the born, and when you were born, your, your soul took on human flesh. And the flesh is evil and smothers the soul. And so in the end, what happens is that the soul needs to free itself from the body, do you see? Whereas Jesus teaches, and the New Testament teaches, the resurrection of the body. Uh. We shall all be resurrected.